It's 14th of September 2020. Welcome to Good Morning Africa with your Australia Kwame O Sudan. So thank you very much for always supporting us. Over the weekend, I trust that you enjoyed Alaji and Alaji. It was uh, a very wonderfully organized um, program here on the show, I mean on Pan-African Television, and all the panelists did exceedingly well. Kamal Dean, um, Gabriela Tete, Yiriman Moses Ambing, and uh, Chumbuafo, they did exceptionally well. I watched, I watched it on Saturday and I enjoyed it a lot, I enjoyed it a lot. A lot of things have happened. A lot of water have passed under the bridge. Many people are uh, now becoming aware of the fact that we're closing the gap when it comes to elections. We are almost getting to the election period. Um, and everybody's, you know, most of us are sitting, sitting on tenter hooks. We are eagerly ready to get into the December polls to either vote for or vote out uh, the, you know, the, either John Dramani Mahama or Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. Most of these political figures are on their campaign trails. Um, the, the vice president of the Republic of Ghana is somewhere up north, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. Uh, was in Bono Enclave, and uh, former President John Romani Mahama has, I think, has, has stood around the water region, I guess, I believe, uh, up north, some, part, some parts of the northern region. Uh, the running mate is somewhere in the western region now. And, and so, you know, it appears that we are really getting to the climax of all the events and uh, for us to elect who is going to lead us for the next four years. We're going to be updating you on a program that we've dubbed election focus here on Pan-African television. Ele election focus essentially highlights all the campaigning events and all the things that have said relative to the elections ha that have been said by political figures relative to the election uh, election pe period um, and you know several other things that you need to know about the Ghanaian election. So we're going to make sure that we present you with all of that on Pan-African television. It's going to be starting pretty soon election focus uh, will be starting pretty soon but this morning though we're going to be touching on uh other very important issues here we're going to be touching on african story opposition rejects transitional deal in mali or transition deal in mali i have for chiefs endorse four more for nana the daily sets light presidency not for experiments nana Dankwe Kufaro is talking power crisis looms as high installed energy generation leads to rising debt the insight news paper reported uh, this particular uh, story and actually the story that we're looking at on the front page of the inside has to do with um, Ghana Federation of Labor boss who is warning against um, sweet unrealistic and deceptive campaign promises so these are the topics that we're going to be uh, we're going to be discussing this morning murder of University of Ghana law lecturer it's also on the front page of uh, the Daily Analyst. And we're going to be touching on all of these stories here uh, on the show. I've been joined in the studios by Mujib Rahman, who is a, uh, a leading communicator of the MPP. Good morning to you, Mujib. Uh, the, the last time we met was on Friday, I guess. Was it, was it Friday or Thursday? Yeah, Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday. But that was on our usual... Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Unofficial <laughs> duties. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you guy. And then, uh, <laughs> Tommy, oh, you're a bad boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, here yes, is Dr. Mark Angel Ket Nawani, who has been missing in action for some time now. I guess he was in his constituency. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning. Were you in your constituency? Uh, yes. How yeah, are uh, they? Mbade Manema and uh, Mane Manema doing? Oh, they are all doing well. Mbade Manema. It's tough for a dog this time around because. <laughs> Signals we've been picking from his constituency, <laughs> and I watch him. He was so wild. Those are wrong signals. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what signals are you picking? You know, but, but we had to cancel his service to my constituency because particularly they couldn't put any uh, put together a good program for him. To, yeah. to stop there. No. Yes. No. Mm. no. Yeah, but is, is it not because of the spillage of the, oh, uh, the of the background no, and the, and the attendant consequences? No, that's okay too. So no, but there was a new statement that no, he, no, will no. Stop, he will stop uh, uh, the that damage. That happened two weeks ago. The damage. And, really and rather really visit really those really who are affected by yeah. the spillage. He had visited and continued to visit and will continue to visit, but he was supposed to make a stopover 
in the Bodaboto area. But when is the election, dog? When is, no, when is the and, general and, election? And, and, it's not well, something to well, think well, about. Well, well, no, it's well, not something to think about. Prepare oh. to quit. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, but. All right, so. Prepare to quit. Mr. Thompson has also joined us. He's the executive director for ASEPA. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. For the first time, having you on my show. Super excited about it. Thank you. Uh, Asepa, I'm, that's an offshoot of the <laughs> of NDC. Oh, how? Why? <laughs> why, would you, why would you say that? I mean, I, I think... Uh, oh, but, but that is... No, we take strong exceptions to that. No, no, I'm, you I'm, can't I'm, take... I'm part of Asepa. So, you're part of Asepa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and here, yeah, so you... So, when you, when you talk <laughs> of uh, AFAC, and then you say something, I'll take you on. AFAC. You see, it's laughing. Hold on, hold on. You see, the, for the MPP, yeah. this is almost like a technique. Yeah. And I think President Ekufuado himself has been leading this charge. Yeah. Anybody who has been critical of his administration belongs to the NDC. Either you are an NDC, you are a naysayer, or you are a professional Jeremiah. And so, <laughs> you say, you say, so you're not shocked at all. Okay, you're not shocked at all. All right. So, um, so like I said, we're going to be touching on an African story which has to do with Mali. Um, opposition rejects transition deal in Mali. Now, it's very interesting. Um, would you let me start with you? What is happening in Mali? You know, the administration was toppled, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the military took over the administration of, yeah. of Mali. Yeah. Now, what is very interesting is the fact that they took over because of the fact that they said, oh, the government was not performing well, people were poor. Yeah. Uh, and the economy was not in good shape and things like that. that now, upon the beyond even that, that yeah. see, this is very laughable. Yeah. Now they say, okay, let's find out how we're going to ensure that there's a, there's a smooth transition yeah. so that we can hand over power mm. to a civilian um, government. Mm. Now they go and then they have this conversation with the military guys. The military guys said, no, not only civilians can lead, the military can also lead. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting what is happening in Africa. Eh? Yeah, yeah, they said, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no difference between a civilian. Mm. And a military person. In fact, a civilian is a human being. A military man is also a human being. No, but so if, they can if, that, if that, that you know, is, so, that is so, not true. so the whole idea yeah. of toppling that particular administration mm. in order for the smooth sail of that particular um, um, country, country, you know, uh, appears to be some level of parochialism where yeah. people feel like, okay, it's in our own interest, so let's go and do this. That has always been yeah. the issue yeah. relative yeah. to yeah. coup d'etats yeah. and things yeah. like that on the yeah. continent. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Kwame, that is true. What you have said is 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 is, is the, 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 the truth. And Kwame, I have, <laughs> I have monitored, uh, I've monitored <laughs> what is uh, the Mali affair. Yeah. You know, Mali, this is not the first time. Yeah. So they, I think, in the Sahel area that have been noted by this kind of yeah. uh, intermittent political turmoil. So, mm -hmm. but Kwame, do you know my worry? My worry is sometimes we don't have to get there. We don't have to get there because we don't have to create the opportunities for those we don't want them to come to come. But Kwame, but you see, the whole situation looks very dicey. And you, if you understand how the, the, the game is being played, well, this started by the opposition to uh, is it Abaka Keita. Yeah. And then uh, it was trying to manage it at a point it escalated. Other smaller political parties joined the opposition. And they took uh, the government on by all what would I call then as legitimate, uh, legitimate uh, uh, processes. And finally resulted in demonstration to get their government out as a result of yeah. uh, economic hardship and lack of jobs and all those things. But Kwame, and when this thing, I think uh, Eco was tried to get in at that level and mm. try to, you no, know, some uh, uh, four African head of states visited Mali and tried to talk to the opposition leaders to see how they can, they can, they can, they can, they can, they can. Uh, broke a peace it, between yeah. the government and the operations. I think shortly after they left, I think now the military took over and then uh, hosted, uh, took the president hostage and all those stuff and took over the country. But Kwame, I am not surprised because if this time around, uh, all we all play to, what we all play to do is to uh, do or practice what we are experiencing in Ghana and other West African nations. That's democracy. But if you think that you want to get into power, you want to also rule, 
Maybe some people, we have seen military, retired military officers in Ghana who have occupied positions. So you can retire and decide to join to politics. But the fact that you are still in the barrack, the fact that you are still a top notch of the military, maybe commanders, you don't have to come. And when you are coming, you are coming to take over within a short period of time. Then you allowed a transition, a smooth transition. So we all play to be ruled by civilians. So if what I'm hearing from that is what is coming from the military is unfortunate. It's really, really unfortunate. Yeah. And this will serve as a lesson. <coughs> Kwame, yeah. come, let me no, just go. Course, 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 it will serve as a lesson to uh, the African leaders across the country, especially in West Africa, that doc, don't give the don't give them the opportunity. Because they are also watching and they are also experiencing what is going on. But it is when you are fighting. Then they now come in as people who want to come and just uh, mediate or they are coming to take over, allow you to go back and then you can now see how you come in. That look at what uh, we are being told, that there's no difference between a military, of, a military man and a civilian. And Kwame, that is very, to me, it's not, it's not, it's sarcastic. Mm. Because there's difference. If you are active military officer, you are in the barracks, there's a difference. There's right. a difference between you and a civilian. So mm -hmm. at any point in time, if you want to get into government, if you feel you have the, that you want to serve your people in that capacity, you can resign as an officer and then you can join a political party. Maybe if the pol that political party get the opportunity to rule the country, maybe who knows, you can be made a minister or somebody in a very uh, high position mm. that you can contribute to. Yeah. But, but I don't think that we have to be encouraging the military to step in. Mm. But that is also to our leaders. They do what is necessary. Kwame, it is about bread and butter. Absolutely. The people of Mali crying because of the economic situation. Sometimes we can be real. And Kwame, when you see the fanciful lifestyle yeah. and the... And the, and the, and the affluence. The affluence, of, the, 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 affluence. Uh, like, let me borrow my, 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 my friends with the high falutin lifestyle. <laughs> and the common man in the village is living in the Taj building. I hope you have seen the video from some part of my region where Dr. Baumia had to save a, 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 a over 80 year woman who, that, that, that according to the I, story, that thing that has, I never, has never slept on a mattress. Yeah. Me, these are some of the things that, that we thing have that I took across the Absolutely. What's that, strong exception? That I, is I, I took strong exception to that. I so, mean, but, but it's fine. But, I, is, I, it wrong, but, you know, but is it wrong? But, to, is, is, it, no, but I mean, is it wrong to come to somebody? It's wrong. Why? What it's wrong. Way? Because Why? If, you, if, you, if you address the housing challenge across yeah. the country, nobody would have to live in those buildings. For but, but, Kwame, but let's do this. But, 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 anyway, but, but the housing is, issue has been systematic. Absolutely. So, that, that, so, he's so, you a know, oh, but, so, so power, he can address that issue. Oh, my God. I mean, that's just But, Kwame, let's don't reduce that to that discussion. So, you are here. Mm. Your people go, ah, so when you send your crew to a Nabong. community in the in the Nabong, in the, in the Upper East yeah, region, uh, what were you seeking to do? We are seeking to highlight the challenges of the people. Exactly. So when you highlight so the challenge, no, exactly. Address. When you highlight the challenge mm. and there's intervention yeah. to address that challenge, as a journalist, did you succeed or, or you don't? You it's, don't. Not, it's not about that. No, I, I am. Have a general general problem. Problem. I'm also asking you a yeah. problem, but yeah. don't limit the general problem to now. In terms of housing, mm. Kwame, systematically, mm. government has failed in terms of addressing the housing challenges. Mm. That does not prevent anyway, you. I mean, if, my, if my sister. Is facing challenge in terms of housing, and you go and help my sister. You won't be praised, or you won't get the, the, the reward of it. So let's don't do the politics what's as the usual finality this of the, morning. What's the finality of your argument? I think it's unfortunate, but I think that uh, it is not beyond ECOWAS. I think they have to come in and put their foot on ground and make sure the needful is done in Mali. We need to restore within the shortest possible time mm. uh, civilian ruled in Mali mm. as we move forward. You know, it's, it's very interesting. They don't have to entertain the, 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 the stand of the military. Absolutely. And then there are so many things. They can be, sanctions can put on them. They can, they can, so they also know the consequences of you know, their stance. You know how they were able to identify this, these challenges? Yeah. Um, it's as a result of what was captured in the transitional documents. Yeah. And then they realized that these guys actually wanted to grab power. Yeah. You know, yeah. they yeah. wanted to grab and so, hold on to power. Yeah, so me, uh, that, but, that, but, that but is, is money, this, 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 if you look at African countries that have been involved in coup d'etats, it appears that the reasons are often the same. You know, mm. um, ailing economy, faltering economy, you know, people living in abject poverty, um, you know, 
lack of set, a certain Prime level Minister, of participation. But yeah. that is that is they will always come with those uh, nice excuses. Yeah, but, 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 you see, but most of the things most of the they end up they they will, they will end up by more important. No, 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 I get your point. Have experienced it in Ghana here. Property and accountability. I get your point. Where did they leave us? No, 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 Mujib, I am not in disagreement <laughs> with what you are saying. What exactly. I'm saying is that yeah, yeah. it appears that mm. the generality of all the coup d'état that we've had yeah, 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 have yeah. always been predicated on some of these sour economic labels and whatever. Yeah. So these are the exigencies that you know allows for some of these coup d'etats to occasion right yeah so that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. but i mean it is not different from what is happening in ghana and oftentimes you realize that coup d'etats are giving major oxygen by the citizenry when the citizens become fed up they yeah. start the agitations yeah and then the military people will take over yeah. and then you know topple the administration yeah but um how do we address this because it appears no, that it's never going to go nowhere what i'll say is that it appears that we are not learning good lessons from our past yeah yes because if you look you look at all the coups that have happened mm. like we're saying on economic issues uh, the issues of corruption uh nepotism etc uh the issue of uh, lack of good governance these these are the issues that is always played out by whoever um takes over uh, uh the gov the, the government by force and what we are not looking at is um, whether the, 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 the so-called opposition, what role they played before these military men uh, you know, came or took over. This is very, very important because it has always happened that it appears that tacitly mm. we always have some elements of the opposition who support these military men to take over and thinking that immediately they take over they are going to hand over to them but that doesn't work out if you look at our history there have been transitions that they claim would take only six months and have ended up in in in, in 10 years or more so we, we need we, we need to now learn certain lessons that know that even though, for example, we are all aware the MPP government is not performing, we are all aware they've borrowed so much money they can they can account for anything. But we should possibly, at some stage, believe in the process of what voting, the democratic process that we have laid out. If you look at um, this military man who took over, maybe they took over. There was pressure from everywhere that they should hand over. Now they've drawn a transitional program that they will be in power for 18 months. Absolutely. And that the call to, to, to let a civilian lead the government is, 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 is not correct because they can also leave. They can also leave. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, um, <laughs> yeah, they can also leave. And that. Mm -hmm. um, they are supposed to be independent arbiters. And at this stage, let me tell you, the other side will also buy into it. Because those who want to take over now are those who were in a position. Now, those who would like the military probably to, uh, pro, to, 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 I mean, to handle the situation after the handover is now those who they overthrew. That's the government party. So once again, the two parties that were quarreling are on each other's neck. Mm. So don't think that in the country, everybody is supporting that the military should hand over to the opposition. It, it, it isn't like that. It's not going to be like that. They would rather prefer the military to continue to hang on, and that is how they are... Uh, they perpetuate their stay in power until such a time that they possibly they they, they, they want the handover or there's pressure from the from um, the external. So I will at this stage also advise the military um, uh, leadership that it never most often ends up well if they stay for so long. I believe that they are. 
18 months, uh, so-called, this thing should probably be cut short. And they should, as soon as possible, organize a, f a free and fair election and get the rightful uh, government to power. After all, um, the former head of state is sick. I understand he's even been taken out of the country. Yeah. The, 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 the president. Yeah, we okay. And now that the president is out of the country, the ruling government has to organize themselves well and be ready for elections with a new possible leader. Yeah. And then the opposition too should be ready for elections. And so they should, as soon as as possible, I might even give six months or something like that. Uh, not much more one year, but six months yeah, is okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. It's okay. Let them campaign, let them come out with their manifestos. The parties are already in existence. And let us have a free and fair elections. If not, what we are going to, what we need to do is that there should be a lot of pressure from the external. That is uh, ECOWAS, the African Union, the UN, etc. They should put a lot of pressure on this military people to hand over as soon as possible. We can't go back to our former days where um, you know, the whole of the sub-region was considered by military coups and you know it has got a ripple effect. Sometimes it starts over here when nothing happens it goes over there and in the long run we don't have patience for the elected people. We don't have patience for the people that we have asked them to govern us. It is true that this man might be doing something wrong or some things were not going on well. The, 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 the population had uh, demonstrated against uh, uh, the, 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 the president and his party. But at the same time, uh, we, we shouldn't let that one be the norm. The norm is that we should always use the structures um, that exist. We should always use the, the, the institutions that exist to fight our cause. In Africa, our problem is that most of these institutions that we, we can use to fight our cause are practically very weak. The, the media, the judiciary, these are other organizations that we can use. And that is where the military always have a very big hand, you know, passing through the back door to take over the governance process. Thank you very much, Dr. Nawani. Well, if you just don't know, you're watching the news every segment on Pan African Television with the Australia Kwame Ousuda. So let me remind you again that the WhatsApp number is active. It's 0260 We're also streaming live on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash Pan African Television. Let's now hear from Mr. Thompson. Sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, very good morning. Mm, mm. That's right. That's right. In Mali, it's a very delicate one. It's one that brings in sharp focus the geopolitics of the sub region. Um, I think we've had these problems in our, in our sub region for quite a while. Uh, you know, uh, every almost every year we are dealing with one crisis in one country or the other. And so uh, I think we must, <coughs> we must be looking at how we can address the entire, you know, instability situation in the sub region and uh, because it has a rippling effect on other countries yeah. um, we, we, and we still don't know the situation in Burkina Faso uh, this you know upsurge of insurgency and other attacks and what have you they, they transcend across the borders and it affects all, all, all of us the general instability in the region and so it's an issue that must be you know tackled well uh, I think that the ECOWAS leaders um, must must pay a lot more attention to the issues, uh, and I'm very excited that uh, our president uh, Nana Kufuado is now the chairman of ECOWAS. Uh, uh, we hope that um, he will bring his leadership skills and experience to bear on this on this issue, and um, whatever that they can do, you know, uh, multifacetedly to ensure that. Um, the bring stability and this whole power struggle between the military and then the civilians uh, do not escalate because I mean once the military sees power and they taste bit of it and they enjoy the goodies you know and this now the military can feel that oh so this is what the politicians enjoy eh? oh okay it's not just about the 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 
that they can do their work. It's also about the privileges, you know, that comes with power. And they are also humans. They, they also have affinity for luxury. So if they also, you know, have access to all this, you know, luxury and privileges that is accrued to the civilians, you know, for doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> that's what they think, you know. Yes, if eventually they think that, yes, these civilians have access to everything and they, they end up doing nothing. So why don't we enjoy and see what we can also do? Absolutely. Yes, and so that's that's what you know makes it difficult. So it needs to be managed properly, because once somebody has tasted power, when you eventually transition and bring a civilian government, trust me, the probability that these people have tasted power can come back is very high. Mm. And we have an example with even in our country. Yeah. You know, when, um, you know, President Rollins, after the 79, the 79 coup, came back came in, back. in 81, after, yeah. you know, um, Le Mans, Le Mans mm. you know, and it, it's because of power, you know, because once you taste it, you understand the intric intricacies of it, you know what you can do and what you can achieve with the power. When you go and sit back and... You have nothing you absolutely cannot you know do it almost anything then you watch on was the civilians who you believe are very much incompetent or you believe you are more knowledgeable than mm. sit there and enjoy all these people and they are still messing up you probably come back and so i think there should be a very a strong you know mechanism on the ground with this you know and it should be a lot more diplomatic you know very diplomatic and I think there's a way that they can transition these military guys also into the system where you know whoever takes over power from them can feel safe and the country can can be stable because mm. it's, it's it's a very dicey one yeah. very dicey one right so we're, we're, we're done with the African conversation let's come back home and discuss some domestic issues as well now I'm sure that um, you have been following the political campaigns and you've been following, for instance, the president of the land, Anadu Dankwe Kufuadro. You have also been following the leader and flabber of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama. And you have been exposed to the many things that they've been telling the people and the many things that they've been doing. And also the responses emanating from the people. Now... The president, Nana Dankwe Kufuado, was recently cited in Ahafo. And even though the constitution specifically bars chiefs from engaging themselves in politics, it appears that some chiefs have defied the constitution. And the chiefs have raped the constitution. And they have endorsed a candidate for four more years which candidate is nana adodankwa ekufuado now on the basis of that it has become more imperative for us to delve deeper and deeper into what would have you know um triggered the minds of these chiefs to endorse one flag bearer as opposed to the other i'm starting a conversation with you dr nawani uh, for you to share with us what your immediate response would be with respect to this particular subject matter, where chiefs in Ahafu have endorsed Nana Dankwe Kufado for four more years. Sir, let's hear from you. Yes, um, uh, I must say that the, the call for chiefs not to be involved in politics has been there for possibly more than uh, 20 or 30 years since uh, the, st the, 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 the start of democracy in the country, since independence. And indeed, gradually, chiefs have been given a role to play, and even their president uh, or some, other, some of them even serve in the Council of State. What baffles me is most often 
they support the government in power. And that is, they tell the government what the government wants to hear. Whereas the same government, when you go into opposition and the next government comes, they also try to do the same thing. And sometimes I want to um, think that could it be related to our African culture? That, you know, when the president or the big chief of the country comes to our area, we, 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 if, if we want to criticize him, we must criticize him uh, indoors. Whilst when we come out, we should sing his praises. Sing his praises. <laughs> because if you look at all these chiefs, after they have said that, oh, we know that you as a president, you are doing well, you keep your promises, and uh, uh, you are cutting sword here for us to start this project, etc. They go on to say that, I must say that, you know, we hope that you complete our roasts, you complete this. In other words, the demands that come in after um, the so-called praises. I said that, in fact, picking the demands alone, you can sum them up and say that the government has not done anything. You see that the, they will mention the road that leads to this place, this place is too bad or motorable. They will tell you that um, you said that you do that, you do that. All this, if you sum them up very well, you realize that actually what they, mean, they, they, they want to say is that you still have a lot and a lot to do. And so I don't know whether this is part of our African uh, uh, Ghanaian culture, and so we should tolerate it. Is it that some of the chiefs are so psychophantic that um, he is not speaking for himself sometimes? I say, mainly midom. What about you, you, you and your, your, your people? I mean, we know that every party has got a stronghold. So obviously, if you go to um, a place like uh, Gorso, etc., it could be that it is a stronghold of the MPP. And so you might not be very, very far from right if you say me, name me dumb. But assuming that you go to an area where the MPP has been losing, can you say me, name me dumb? Because that would mean that you and your people, and obviously if for the past two or three elections, the MPP have now won over there, can you make this type of statement over there? So let us look at it. And I believe that the chiefs, should listen to people like uh, Otunfo and other uh, revert chiefs that try to balance up the equation to some extent. While they give you place somewhere, possibly somewhere too, they would like to draw your attention to the fact that so many things are undone. And another aspect is, I don't know whether it has to do with the reportage. Because if the reportage wanted to be balanced, they could, could have also highlighted. No, I watched the video. Yeah, I, I look at the video myself. I watched the video and it was it was emphatic. Yes. You see, I, and I think that we need to we need to dwell on the actions of those chiefs. Yeah, okay. And whether it finds expression in that constitution. Because you see, the constitution is very very wise. Or if you will, the the framers of the constitution are yeah. very, very wise. So in framing the constitution, they decided to reserve certain, you know, certain things. Yeah. Um, and if you read the constitution, it tells you clearly that chiefs are not, and, and it was deliberate, why chiefs must not be involved in active politics, which is why oftentimes if somebody wants to go into parliament, you have to, you have to abdicate us too. Exactly. So that you can go into active politics because you are not supposed to be biased. Mm -hmm. The chiefs are supposed to be, if you will, the arbiters and, um, to some to very minimal extent persons who would be able to bridge the gap between the citizenry and government mm. so that they will be able to speak truth on behalf of their people to government so if you find a chief 
endorsing a person. I think it's, it's questionable, really. And we must that's deal with that. Yeah, that, that, that is an extreme case, and that should not be encouraged in any uh, democracy. Because, um, like I, I wanted to say, the chiefs should learn from revenge chiefs like Otunfo and to be a fede, yes, etc. Where, when it is necessary, when it is necessary, they should tell the president or his appointees that things are not going well, and that you can do better than what you are doing. Absolutely. If we don't do that, I will continue like um, to you know look at the size of the envelopes that they came with to the palace, the amount of drink that they came with to the palace. And after they say that, no, we, 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 after taking this type of envelope, cannot tell them what they've not done or what they're supposed to do. Then, in fact, we'll be far away from, 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 um, from, from um, helping the nation. Yeah. Yes. And um, the chiefs should, at this stage, understand that Irrespective of what they say, you know, I don't know, some chiefs as if they always have some fear for authority or they must have friends in government for them for them to, to, to be able to implement uh, or for the government to work for them. No. I'll cite you an example. So prior to the voter registration exercise, yes. we went to um, a community in the central region. Okay. Uh, I forgot. I think, I think it's, is it Amina? I think so. One of those places. And then we wanted to interview the chief there to sample his opinion on whether or not the elderly, you know, must be involved in the process because of COVID 19. The chief told us specifically that Amidzi Abana Awado no Yamaban. So, in other words, even though they hold a contrary opinion, to the voter registration exercise mm. being conducted, yeah. they, you know, resigned themselves to not quit commenting on it because it will offend the government in power. Oh, the government of the day. So yes, so they decided not to comment on it. Exactly, and that is the mentality that has entered most of them. And as if they will not be recognized by the government of the day if they hold a certain opinion. Or if they air out a certain opinion, they won't get a view. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, 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 you know. So sometimes I even feel that will you be disturbed if you, you speak your mind, because in the long run, I've seen that in this country, um, development does not necessarily go to areas or is not carried out by governments in areas who support them strongly. Sometimes uh, it goes to other areas. So it, it depends on probably the lobbying powers of certain areas yeah. or how economically viable that project is to the country. All right. So let us let let uh, our um, our chiefs mm. be told that no, it is high time they look at us, the politicians in the face, and tell us what is the truth. Unless we do this, then there's no need blaming the politicians All right. for uh, lack of development, for lack of uh, support, for not carrying out uh, um, activities that they're supposed to carry out. Because you are not even telling us that you need them. Thank you very much. Let me come to you, uh, let me come to you, Thompson. Well, I hold a very contrary opinion on this issue. Okay. Um, I think there are a number of laws in our constitution that has. I mean, I'd leave its usefulness in contemporary uh, democracy. Mm. And one of them is the non-participation of chiefs in politics. When things go wrong in this country, we expect to hear the voices of the chiefs because we believe they are the custodians of the land. There are a number of times we've called on chiefs to make their opinion on issues affecting the people of this country public, to impress on government to do the right thing. And a classical example is what the example you gave. The chiefs have declined to make comments because of this whole notion of in political interference. But I think in the end, we all want to hear our chiefs 
who are the custodians of the land, who are the traditional rulers. I mean, they are first touch with the people. If I when things go wrong, they are the first line of you know you know defense for our people in the various communities. When things go wrong, we expect them to come out and say it. We expect them to voice out. We expect them to put pressure on governments to do the right thing. In that same vein, if a chief feel that one one government or one government has done good for him or her or for for his people and wants to commend the government or endorse the government, there should be absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think we must be able to, you know, tolerate some of these things so that we can grow together. So the chief can feel free to endorse a government, can feel free to criticize a government. Then we can have the balance. And so I don't have any problem. The only issue is that the chiefs must be a bit circumspect on what they see and what they do. Because at the end of the day, the effect of whatever that you do will be on you and your people. So for example, this chief who has endorsed President Tekufuado, if he can look in his, his constituents or his, his, his people in the eye and say, look, President Tekufuado has done so much for us, and he can actually point to things I'd say because of that, he's endorsing the president for another four years. I think it's between he and his people. And me, if I am his constituent or I live in that tradition area or I come from that area, the following morning I walk straight to my chief's palace and I'll ask him to show me what President Kufuado has done. You should, you, should be, you should be able to explain to us why you believe we should give President Kufuado another four years. He owes that explanation to his people. And like I said, if I were one of them, I would just go straight and ask. You must be able to point out and you must be able to justify your position. If it makes sense, fine. If it doesn't, we take you on. And so I think uh, we, must, we must make th these restrictions on chiefs a bit flexible because at the end of the day, I think the voices of chiefs in our democracy is getting lost. It's getting lost. Um, and the politicians are taking advantage of it uh, through all sort of inducement and you know shutting our chiefs up you know when issues happen you go to the chief the chief don't want to talk because a has been done or because if he, if he says anything he won't get a or b the, the national resources of this country must be shared adequately for every region everywhere irrespective of where you are coming from it's our, it's our sovereign resources. And it shouldn't be shared according to who bootlegs the most. Which chief bootlegs the certain government the most. That shouldn't be the yardstick for which our resources should, should be distributed. We need that level of honesty. And that will make our chiefs consistent. Because if you hold this government to the same level of accountability, when another, another government comes, your people will expect that same, levels of uh, that same level of pressure that you hold the previous government to from the same government you, you you can't be inconsistent with the the with your actions and with the issues and so for me i don't see anything wrong with a chief endorsing the, the president i don't see anything wrong with okay it. But my, my my issue has to do with the same constitution because you're saying that you believe that there are some provisions of the constitution that have outlived its usefulness one of such has to do with the fact that the chiefs must not be directly involved in politics, active politics. Yeah. But you see, the constitution guarantees some level of security for the chiefs, for instance, that no parliament shall pass a law that will enable any you know, political party to make nonsense of the existence of the chieftaincy um, um, system, right? So that's some level of protection. Now, if you want to open the system up, such so that chiefs will be... And there's a reason why the chiefs must not be actively involved in politics. Mm -hmm. So that they would be the voices for the people. Because if, for instance, you live in a community where not all of them belong to one political party, mm -hmm. right? But then you go and you say, I'm endorsing mm -hmm. Nanadakwe Kufado. What, how do you think the other people would feel? Can Particularly I? when mm -hmm. they see the chiefs as, or they, they see the, 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 the palace as a sanctimonious place where they could, you know, they could go for some level of comfort in the event that political parties are not respecting the views. That's one, too that chiefs in fact to a very large extent we say that chiefs cannot be insulted but president can be insulted 
Now, if we allow for the chief chancy system or institution to be dragged into active politics, we are ex extending that level of insult. God, then there will not be any bottleneck, any barrier whatsoever. If I'm insulting the chief, I'll insult the chief. Because the chief has disrespected one political party, in my opinion, you know, to the other. Well, I, I think it, it falls into the broader moving of society of our, of our, of our country towards this polarization that, 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 for me, is needless. The level of polarization. I mean, the moment I entered your studio, my, my friend from the NPP just attacked my organization mm -hmm. as an offshoot of the NDC, mainly because we've been critical of, of the government. current government. And that level of polarization is needless for me. And it's, it, it is the reasons why we are where we are. I think we must be moving towards a period where chiefs, people can criticize governments without being... being and but without necessarily yes. also being political. Yes, but who... who but even the chief state system is in itself is a political yes, office. But what, this, what defines when the constitution, constitution says chiefs must not be involved in active politics? What is active politics? If, a, if, if, a pre, if, a, if, if a president visits my palace mm -hmm. and I commend him for doing something good, mm -hmm. is that politics? No, but if you ask you, you and your, all your people to vote for a particular chief, uh, that's active uh, politics. That is active but if politics. you comment the chief, say, but no, if you comment mm -hmm. the chief, if you comment the president, no, that oh, it is you have got us this, you got us that, we thank that, you. you know, that's, I think that's fair. But, whatever but I've done. seen a number of things. Is it a, mm. a number of chiefs? come out voice voicefully a number of chiefs come out and i'm saying that i mean let's give the chiefs the freedom to also voice their sentiment out we must give them that no, no, see, but 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 calling, yes but you but see, calling on people you see, yes, i think no course, chief no chief yes. in this country has been denied the opportunity yes. to speak their minds mm -hmm. no chief yes. at all so no, if a chief, and as one of fact they in my opinion they mm -hmm. actually reserve the right and more yes. to speak if a chief to power because if they a, are not political if a chief criticizes a government mm -hmm. Is he indulging politics? But what kind of criticism is that? No, but that, I mean, that I live it. For instance, there's this chief who said that I am not saying, I'm not speaking for all chiefs in Ghana. I'm speaking from, from my perspective and for my people. I have not seen anything that the government has done. He said, make me dear. Me name dear. I could follow a year or Make, I'm not speaking for all other chiefs. several videos absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And that's anything wrong. Right absolutely. He said, me. And, 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 and that's what Dr. Nawani said. But the fact that he has not seen anything is not to also suggest that we should go and vote for Mahama. Yes, and I think that the, the, what you are talking about, which I get, is that we must know where the boundaries Absolutely. are. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the point. That's the point I'm trying to establish. That was, it's very, I mean, and this is, this is common sense that, you know, you can't also belittle the stool that you sit Absolutely. on. Absolutely. You must know that the stool Absolutely. that you sit on yeah. is a very, it's, 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 it's symbolic of the people and it's like, the spirit and the soul of the people you rule over. Absolutely. And so you cannot, you know, belittle the stool by always engaging needless uh, 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 partisan stuff. But I'm saying that if a president visits a chief palace and the chief commends him for doing something good and, and calls on people that because of A, B, C, D that the president has done, uh, my people vote for him. I don't see anything wrong with it. In the same way, when the, it's the same way a president when a chief gets up and say, I don't see what this government have done, A, B, C, D. And so, vote against them. I don't see anything wrong with it. You see, at, at, at the end of the day, we must be able to, you know, allow, you know, this level of, I think, uh, f fundamental freedom of our traditional rulers to, uh, to also, you know, I mean, openly, you know, play their role in a democratic process. I, I think that the onus lies on them to draw the boundaries. And you have to ensure that you don't, in, in, in exercising this freedom, you don't go overboard, which will attract needless criticisms or needless condemnation for your stool. But that fundamental freedom, you know, and liberty to express yourself as a chief, for me, I think shouldn't be taken away. It must right. be encouraged. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Thompson is the executive director for ASEPA, and we just listened to him uh, on the subject matter of the chiefs who have endorsed Nanadan Kweku for a reform of Adana. He says that some of the provisions in the constitution uh, have outlived their usefulness, and it's about time we uh, reviewed the constitution in order to allow, in his, in his opinion, for chiefs to be actively involved in Partisan politics. No, no. Aha. No. Aha. No. Mm -hmm. no. 
But you see, so 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 because you see, you because of the point that you made. For instance, the last submission that you made, the last the the in the in the in the, in the final analysis that the uh, what you stated was that you you don't find anything wrong with the chief, for instance, if he's seeing some level of development in his community to endorse one political party and ask for the people to vote for one political party. That's involving yourself in active politics. That That's you saying that vote for the MPP when you know. That there are two political parties or more seeking to govern you have not had the benefit of witnessing what the other political parties can do for your constituents but on the basis of one or two things you are saying that somebody should vote for somebody and that is why the constitution must be reviewed to bring clarity to what active politics is for me i see active politics as a as a, as a, as a sitting chief campaigning for public office for me that's what I, I that is my understanding of active politics active but it doesn't you know, prevent you from commendations so, and remarks. We are not subjecting to interpretations. Yes, Maybe he is but telling I'm you. Telling you but, but I'm saying that I'm saying that the constitution and the framers of the constitution are so wise that they say when they were shouldn't talk. absolutely no, so they shouldn't talk to talk. No, mm -hmm. not necessarily shouldn't uh -huh. talk. But in they should be measured in their public utterances. That's such right. that what because you see, you see, we are engaged in grassroots development if i could say that and decentralized development right but Kwame, so that Kwame, one political Kwame, party Kwame, Kwame. hold on mm, please uh, I'll, 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 so that one political party mm. would not feel that the other the, that the chiefs are in support of another political party and on the basis of that if they win power they will come and say that okay you you people are for mpp stay your that is stay the your. problem that uh -huh. we must take but, 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 no, but that that must, shouldn't be that's the polarization that i talked about mm -hmm. the fact that and and the same way i'm saying that i don't see anything wrong with the chief Commanding the president when the president is visits his palace, is in the same vein that I'm expecting a, the pres, a president to visit a chief in the palace, and the chief will look the president in his eye and tell you you have not done anything for us. But the point is that if the if for instance, like you stated, I I mean in a community where you know the chief himself knows that no level of development has been brought to the people, and but it's still come good licking and saying mm -hmm. that the president should deserves deserves for i, I don't know so, i get so, it i get it so then that that he the chief owes to his people eh, that, that, that responsibility right. okay and so mm. and so it is on his constituent to go to him and say look why are you still campaigning or asking us to vote for this government when mm. we are here we are underdeveloped we are facing right. this challenge okay. that has not been been dealt with right. and so i, I think we, see, we must be able to you know free up the space reduce the level of polarization to the extent that mm. you can criticize a, a government still and still receive the needed development in your community mm. your the, the level of development that comes to a community should not be based on which chief which chief bootlegs the government the most or which chief criticizes the most no it must be on the basis of equity as enshrined in the constitution mm. not on the basis of this political polarity which are, which we've, we've, we've you know um, uh, we've we've wrapped ourselves with mm. which is not taking us anywhere okay. I, I don't believe anyway. in that thank you very kindly uh, let me now come to you Mujib. yeah Kwame, this morning on that topic i'm yes, not sir. with you cry you know i was itching to come out but mm. one thing you should have also well, helped Mujib, us respectfully hold that thought for me let me just go for this quick commercial break stay with us we shall return shortly This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA.
Honestly, good food, good life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, well, if you just joined us, you're watching the news private segment on Pan African Television with me, Kwame Sudan. So, we're still discussing this very important topic, which has to do with some chiefs endorsing four more for Nana. And, uh, Mujib, let's hear from you. Yeah, Kwame, as I started saying, I thought maybe uh, to single out uh, the current one that uh, you would have sampled other chiefs who has also made similar comments. But let's don't dwell much into the politics. But I want to disagree with you on the score that the chiefs, in most cases, don't speak on vacuum. Before, you know, present visiting their region is mm -hmm. a plan. Mm -hmm. They also come together, the, the paramount chief and the sub chiefs. They mm -hmm. also sit down, look at their area, mm -hmm. and then also agree what they are going to tell the president. All if right. it's about a request to be made to the president, mm -hmm. or if about a request has been made already, and the president or government has responded to the request of the people, mm -hmm. that narrative too should change. What are we going to tell the president? So in most cases, the uh, chiefs doesn't speak on their own. Mm. In cases like this, when you see them talking, then it means that they are articulating the concern of their people. I hope you are getting my uh, argument, Kwame. Yeah. But Kwame, but I am also of the view that let's look at the provision in the constitution but if we take the Constitu uh, the chieftaincy act that one that is just uh, it's, it's they themselves have their politics alone and that is there but kwame my concern is active politics and that has been a contention now what is active politics mm. so a chief cannot talk so if a chief made a request to a, a central government mm -hmm. that maybe we need uh, uh, this uh, a development or we need a creation of a region to carve out from this region mm. and based on the assessment government realized that no it is actually true that they 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 they, 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 they are qualified mm -hmm. or let's give it let's let, let's give it to them and you've done it so can the people also by moral grounds and to say oh central government or president who is managing the affairs of the country thank you okay. so saying that thank you will put the chief into in a, in a, in a problem hmm. i don't think that is the best way to go Kwame, okay. it is not happening to only nanadu danko akufado when president mama even now as as a former president and a presidential candidate of the ndc as he's going around other PA chiefs are commending him and some are also when you read and in, try interpret their comment you mm. come to realize that maybe you know where they are but i think that uh, let's look at it and then we can allow them to also express themselves and speak mm -hmm. and speak and speak and speak and speak god wh why they do everything because the chiefs vote even though they say don't do act you don't see them on the campaign trail mm. you don't see them mounted on platforms you don't see them on radio TV and tv stations but doc, they have palace. The people come there. Don't they talk? Don't they discuss? Because what affects the country affects all of them too. So it, they should they are concerned about the development of the country. Mm. Now Mali is in a crisis. You think the chiefs there are insulated? Kwame, are they insulated? <laughs> 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 so I hope we have. So I hope no, so no, 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 the point. Chip, chip, no, the chip, point chip, is, but let's also try to. This is a political season, and you know some of these people, like uh, like my uh, like how I premise my argument. Kwame, some are so happy with some of the things that have gone to all. They have made. They have requested, and they have gotten, and they felt that no, this is the way we live. This is our culture. Let, let's. Oh, the young Konen Kachiram say yeah, that's it. And we shouldn't hold them on mm, that. I and see. you see them going, just, just and thing. others too, who have made a request, maybe have not yet gotten. And you see their response is different. Uh, yeah. And you see our hypocrisy. When the response is negative, you see it's being highlighted by the media to paint the government or the president black because he couldn't respond to the needs and aspirations of these people at this particular time. But when it is positive, then you now try to bring the constitutional provision. 
I don't mean bad. I don't. I don't mean bad. But what even the vice? No, the vice president recently was in my region, and as you, I hope you listen to the chief of Tumu, the Tumu. He said, he said that the level of the the seriousness attached to their rules will tell them which area to 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 vote for, and if that is true. And I think that that is that that that, that is their concern to the people. But you see how he said it. I, yeah, you see, you see, that's you see, how you say it. Oh, Bakwami, Bakwam, but mm -hmm. this one, but oh, you can just know, you can you, just read it and you, know what the response. You 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 yes, you, you remember, I, you remember, yeah, I, you remember, I, I had a, I, you know, I, I felt this whole limitations and restrictions strongly during the campaign against the voters, new voters register, mm -hmm. when. Uh, we visited Otum 4 and the Asantaman Traditional Council to petition them to, to at least petitions. to at least um, impress on, on, on the Electoral Commission and government to do something about this because we believe that the moment we were in wasn't ripe for the action that they wanted to take. The Asantaman Traditional Council in Otum 4 could not say a single word probably because of some of these limitations which we believe that maybe Based, if you look at the stature of Utum 4 and the Sentiment Traditional Council, a single word from them could have, you know, sufficed. Or just no, calling. No, let me no, let no, me finish. I'm not, let no, me no, finish. I just want just, to, no, I just want to mm, draw attention mm, to something. Maybe mm. as at the time, the uh, presentation of the petitions was done, mm. or maybe there could be discussions after you had left within. Yes, yes. that would not be yeah. in the public domain. The domain. So but, you can but, conclude no, that we, nothing we, has we, done. No, we. We made specific requests yeah. to the As Asantehene and the Asantiman Traditional Council. Based on your reasons? Yeah, but we made specific requests. They listened to us. They said we're going to call the Electoral Commission to listen to their side of the story. To date, we never heard a word. Not, not publicly, not privately. And I'm saying that perhaps, perhaps mm. it could be some of these limitations. Yeah. Yeah. Which they didn't want to yeah, directly yeah, involve yeah, themselves. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, especially especially when they are all and, 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 yes, and yes, they, they and, shouldn't be and, done and, to overlap and, in the head. And it's, it's, you know, especially when you know that based on the situation at hand, the entire country was what has, was at stake. Look at our corona numbers that before not, before I, the old voters register, and now look at the numbers. Look yeah. at Bro, look I at our corona numbers. No, 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 I guess you. 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 But let us also look at this aspect, you see. The things they know who is coming to them, you know, and they know possibly uh, what type of government or uh, government official is coming and his level of tolerance. It is well known that Akufado cannot tolerate. No, but um, no, no, uh, excuse, uh, excuse, but, excuse but, me. But, 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 and now it is the turn of Akufado to um, to also continue and probably complete it, just by the mention of that of his predecessors. This man, his, it was clear, you know, as we are saying that you saw the chief spoke the same thing. We saw the face of Akufado change, and practically he had to change the process or the the, 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 the program. The, the program, he had to change the program. Hmm. And all of hmm. this is over hmm. the country, and the chiefs are seeing some of these things. They, they are, they are, so they, they'll be scared. Eh? Yes, no, they'll be anyway. scared. They, 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 they. <laughs> and so when you see some of these things, right. and you don't want your program to be mild or to be spoiled, I believe that probably you should know what to say. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh -huh. Let's move on. Let's move on. Now, hmm, 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 hmm. hmm. You there for me? I'm there for you. Maybe so. Uh, but me, I know she nothing wrong with that. Ghana you know. Federation of Labour Boss on the front page of the Inside Newspaper is warning workers over sweet 
unrealistic and deceptive campaign promises. With you, mm. let me start with you. Yeah. Do you agree with him? Yeah. Do you disagree with him? No, but I for uh, promises. Sugar coat. Sugar coat. I for promises. <laughs> we can never. We can never. We can never stop politicians or uh, leaders from promising, especially when it comes to a uh, 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 campaigns. Uh, everywhere in the world, when politicians are up for grabs and candidates are campaigning, they promise. You go to America, there Donald Trump is promising. Uh, Joe Biden is promising. You go to UK and all those things. So, but it depends on the individuals or group of people and how credible the one that is promising is. That is the the, the bottom line. So, but I think that uh, he is only saying that what he's saying it doesn't mean promises are bad, but he is saying that uh, sugar-coated promises, especially those who talk nicely, but when they get the opportunity to man the affairs of the country, they can uh, realize the, the, the promises. I think that is where we are. But Kwame, I think that let's, uh, politicians are also uh, human beings, and not that they have their money in their own packets or their own accounts that they are coming to use to, to develop their country. No, they are coming to use our resources, the resources of the people of Ghana, that we get through taxation, and they use their country to go and borrow and they use our resources the gold the manganese the bauxite the oil the timber etc etc which are for the people of ghana but so Kwame, but sometimes when they get into the reality and i think that they think that oh saying these things in operation we were not aware or we're not uh, briefed or aware of some of these things. But now that we are in and the reality has done on us, we can't achieve this one. Even though we criticize this one and we promise this one, we can achieve it. But those are the leaders we, we, we have, especially those who see the reality and come to tell us the truth as a people. For instance, it happens under President Kufuor when he criticized on the number, the number of ministers then and later had to come and be kind, candid with the people of Ghana. But Kwame, but that is a general statement. So, but I want to look at it in the, uh, uh, Nanado is promising, John Mahama is promising, Nanado is the president, and what he promised in 2016 is delivering on some of the promises, majority of the promises, and he's credible, and you will look at it, I think that a lot, we can't hold him to that mark. And I believe if he gets the opportunity as the slogan and as we are campaigning for more to do more and i think that he will do marvelously well in terms of what he's telling the people of uh, ghana kwame let me be very sincere with you uh, i am coming from the northern part of the country and i know how dear those area of people doctor if you know but i know if you know you won't even see it because you are coming from their camp that people the savannah region how they spread and how effort they put in trying to get a region for a very longer period of time even when mama became president and, and they put the request they, pardon what's the region going to give them oh but some uh, but that one you are questioning me go and question the people but that was their request and that was dear to them so if you want to know it's a, you are, no, I'm, I'm coming as a uh, NGO or whatever or a uh, CSO. You can research into it, yes, but I, this I, I, exactly. So, but but, but no, 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 no. But that is a topic. But this was what some certain group of people requested that, uh, from central the government. Challenges Pardon. In the region has that, the region and region. Kwame, which never granted. But some of these things that uh, you see them, you will not think that maybe if it, not, it doesn't affect you, you begin to question, I am coming. But these are some of the realities. Mm -hmm. But I think that, but when President Nanadu Danko Akufado came, within his first second year, he said, yeah, when going around the country, these are the requests of some of the people. But Kwame, not only based on the requests of the people, Looking at the assessment, the Minister of Regional Integration was set up to look into the matter, the feasibility. And these people wish granted to them. So, but this is a responsive, and this is a person that is saying, say, no, I am concerned about the development of the people and the area, and I'm concerned. And I don't forget, as I'm going around, 
whatever you are telling me now i'm president i'm forgetting what you have told me no but master let's don't go into the politics this request was severally made before pre I, president john Ramana mahama and he couldn't to, respond to to something. the people Kwame, let moving forward mm -hmm. moving forward in mm -hmm. terms of credibility let's even let me even you link you it about link it to the manifest mm -hmm. in terms of credibility of the individuals those who are uh, vying to become the leaders of this country, especially uh, President Nanadu Danko Akufuado mm -hmm. and John Ramani Mahama. And I know, and I know a lot of Ghanaians know, the one that you can, that you can trust when it comes to delivering of, promise, of his promises is President Nanadu Danko Akufuado. And the records are there to tell everybody. So Kwame, I will not be surprised. But the debate is going on. The debate is yeah, going. What, what okay. debate uh, on what? Uh, uh, debate uh, uh, on what? Thompson. No debate on what? Thompson. We'll debate on issues. Debate we'll, 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 but the we'll, issues we'll, have been debated every yeah, day, every yeah. hour. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. All right. So, but well, I, mean, I think that no, no, uh, no, 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 people have all the 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 candidates going around the country promising. It is within their right. They can promise. Okay. President Kufuado. <laughs> he's also promising. Uh, but, but when I say candidates, he's part because he's the president, but he's the candidate of the new patriotic okay. party. But okay. you don't expect to say president, candidate. <laughs> you know, what kind of love? I expect no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But okay, yes, of course. Yeah, but yeah. yes, of course. Why wouldn't we promise? Because mm. when people come and we also know this is dear to the heart of the people, we tell them when I get the opportunity to man the affairs of the country, especially the sea defense world is going, especially the free senior high school that we are enjoying against those who were uh, opposed the, and think that the concept of free senior high school was a mirage and, 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 a, and a utopian thinking. Well, Kwame, today the reality is, 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 is uh, has dawned on us. And we have come, well, now we are not talking about the implementation. We are talking about the, about the sustain, sustainability of it. But that is where we are. Kwame, but I think that the one who take the people of Ghana serious, the one who care for the people, the people, the Ghana project is the one that we have to entrust the future of this country to. And that person is Nana Dudanko Akufado. Okay. Especially when we have the opportunity <coughs> to look right. at to look at all uh, both okay. and assess them. Thank you very and much. I think that the, the Doctor, let me to before I go to Nanadu Nanadu. Okay, you are my, 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 my northern brother. Let me also tell you something. Uh, Whilst we are struggling for regions, etc., uh, 38 new districts were created in Ashanti and Eastin. Go and think about it. The same time, so the discussion never came. Uh, 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 it could not gain grounds because the regional discussions had overtaken everything. Mm -hmm. 38 and look at the resources of the country, whether it's shared on regional basis or it's shared on district basis, and you understand. Okay. Hmm. Having said this, um, I, I would like um, us to understand that uh, once Britain, twice shy. Um, for, I mean, we know what happened in 2016. Whilst the NDC we kept to tell Ghanaians the truth and let them know what we can do and what we cannot do, or what we think that it is not yet time, like the free, um, free SHS, we said that progressively it was going to be what implemented, and others thought that yes, they can just implement it by just um, using our oil money. SHS is implemented using about 44% of the ABFA. That is how uh, this thing is done. And, and you, you, uh, there's no magic about it. It's just the oil money, 44%. And so you came, you used our oil money, you implemented it. But look at the, 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 what has happened. You know, this double track system which has happened, and you are underplaying that double track system. You are underplaying it too much. I don't understand why uh, we, we think that people can go and sit down in the house. I see we've never been students before. And most of us, from the type of homes that we came from, if you ask us to go and sit down in the house for three months, four months, six months, 
We don't go to school, then suddenly we come back to school again. No, that used not to be the system. And that system is destructive. A lot of MPs try to mitigate the effect, including me myself, by trying to organize vacation classes for them, etc. But the cost, the cost was too much for us. And you can ask parents, I'm telling I'm tell that there are some students who are going to do very, very well in this, uh, uh, no, SHS, yes. Not because of the fact that uh, the system was good, but because their parents had to employ where they were. It was said that you could, nobody could even join some parents to, to, to pay for their wars. So there was something like one-to-one. -one. One to one means that you employ a physics teacher for your your your, your, your ward and pay him seven hundred, eight hundred a month. So please, the fallout from this implementation is serious, and that's why the NDC says that yes, we are going to involve the private schools to ensure that you no, know, we as soon as possible what normalize the situation. And some people are asking whether it can be done or not. Where are we going to get the resources? Where are we not going? Uh, when we started with uh, the health insurance, private clinics were not part of it. It was later on that they were added or something like that. We can add them, and for each student, a different premium is paid, taking into consideration that the private school has to carry out its own, uh, has to pay its own teachers and its own maintenance. That is just all. Yes, so it is possible. There is nothing magical about uh, free SHS if we are ready to use our oil money to do that. So please, let us not talk about the, about the free as if uh, some uh, good management of the economy came and they put together. Uh, no, no. What we used to do use for infrastructure, you people decide to use it for free SHS. And we said that let the infrastructure come and the free SHS will follow. And you people still continue that way. Now we are coming back as a government to improve on the infrastructure situation, bring in the private schools and make sure that free SHS is implemented adequately and well. Now I've heard even the government re retracting that no, they are going to involve the private distance, etc. You have four years to involve them and yet you never invited them to any meeting. And now you are inviting mm -hmm. them every day to meetings, All right. wanting them to issue statements. We, uh, gonna, but as regards promises, we're gonna, uh, the NDC, mm. the NDC for any promise that we have made, we have assessed the situation, and we know that we can, it, it, we can do it. We can do it. And that is why um, we say that it is possible. If you look at this um, primary health care that we talk about, People are saying that, but why are you? Going, uh, I mean, where where are you going to get the money from? Where are we not going to get the money from? When you implemented your so-called uh, your so-called planting for food and jobs. Don't be angry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Your, uh, your so-called planting for food and jobs. This is about thirty percent of ABS <laughs> money. No, but that is the reality and because we were in the this FBFA country money. and we were told that health, the FBFA uh, health, uh, uh, nurses allowance will not be restored. Nurses Training allowance, allowance will not be restored. Uh, uh, now you want us to trust you with uh, free primary health care? Uh, the allowance will be restored because of equity. <laughs> that is just all. It was the fact that they are all tertiary institutions now, mm -hmm. and they were going to be funded. Not that they were not going to be restored, but they were be going to be given alternative funding. And that alternative funding is what was happening at the tertiary institutions. Yeah, yes. They are the, they are the best job. And they finished school, and as we are speaking now, just this September is when those who mm -hmm. completed 2017, they just started work uh, this September. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'll let you start work and you vote for me, principal. Twenty eighteen, they are still the house. Coffee for me, Dr. Nawani. It's better than Twenty eighteen, they are still the house. Twenty nineteen, they are still the house. Twenty nineteen, they are still the house. They were in the house. They, 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 they were not even uh, getting the opportunity. My time is not to listen. Your IMF has blocked people from employment. Your time, your time, your time. Your time. Everybody had job. Ah, we those who completed twenty sixteen, they even had job. So please, 
As regards the promises, we have, first of all, studied, done the cost analysis, make sure that, you know, whatever we say we'll do, we can do it. Mm -hmm. And we know where the, the source of funding is coming from. Where, is, like human where the source of funding coming from? From what of them? Where the source of funding coming from? from? Where the source of funding coming from? The the free, the, especially, especially oh, the first year you base, the one percent, the, the, the one percent that they spent on health. Yeah. If we and then uh, they spent thirty percent uh, of the oil money yeah. on planning for food and jobs. Yes. Yes. Planning for food and jobs. No. Yes. And then and then and then we can. But we almost done in our country. Yeah. If we can increase. That amount of money, mm. yeah, it is very, very possible. There's also a cap on the consolidated, consolidated fund, right? The, the, yeah, those caps. So, so they can remove all. Those they stuff. can remove all those things. All, all those things. Okay, let, let me let me come to Thompson. Thompson, let's hear. Well, first, before I can even come, yes. to point, let me let me quickly address this issue of funding. Mm. Where is the money going to come from? That has now become a mantra. I, I think for me, it, it it's an unfair question. And uh, the corruption. Uh, it, can it's, you imagine? It's an unfair question. Especially when the people who are asking the questions are government officials and quasi-government officials who are in government within the past four years have borrowed 125 billion Ghana cities. Taxes alone are in excess of over 200 billion Ghana cities. They've received oil money, 60 billion Ghana cities in four years. Gold royalties has given them three billion. We are talking about excess of over 400 billion in four years. An average of about 100 billion a year. Free SHS alone cost 3.2 billion in the last three years that they've implemented it. 3.2 billion. Free SHS without the private schools cost 3.2 billion in the last three years. You've had 100 billion a year. It's just a microcosm of and you are asking and, and you are asking somebody where he's going to get money from to add private schools. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm, com yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm uh coming -huh. there. You have this question of oh, but they say they are promised. To, they've promised to go. to pay the customers whose money has locked up in the finance institutions. My, and uh, where are they going to get the money from? The entire banking sector mess was about 9 billion Ghana cities. Government, the, this certain government, has spent 16 billion to collapse the banks. Still customers are on the street asking for their money. And you're asking somebody where he's going to get the money from? A problem we need, needed just 9 billion to solve. You spent 16 billion to collapse people's banks. You've been accrued to 100 billion a year. And you're asking where somebody is going to get nine billion to pay the customers? Huh? And you're asking where somebody will get ten billion a year for an infrastructure project called the Big Push? I think the question that we should be asking this group of people is where is the money we've given them? Because if you look at the work that they've done and you compare the quantum of money that has been accrued to them. That is why they are asking where are they going to get the money. That is why they are asking these questions. Because they've chopped the money. Already. Yes, because they've chopped it. Because, see, if they had worked with the money, they would have known that indeed everything that is in the NDC manifesto is not beyond achievable. It can be achieved. What we Ghanaians must hold the NDC government to is that they stick to the promises. And the social contract they are signing to the people of this country that if by the will of god they assume the powers of this country they we keep them to a straight account of their promises absolutely let me commend the ghana federation of labor and my brother uh, abraham kunstin i think they are doing a good job with the advocacy and the issues that the the, the raise are very 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 you know uh, uh, important issues and I think they've raised this issue based on the history. In 2016, we saw the mirage of promises when candidate Kufuado, right from 2008, was promising free SHS, free SHS, free SHS, up to 2016. 
until he won the elections. We could not ask him where he was going to get the money from. He was asked. BBC, that BBC Yes, and he couldn't answer, yeah. but he wasn't able to tell us. Absolutely. What kind of free researchers was he going to give us? How the implementation is going to be? And what have you? So today they come and they give us a double track. And we are, we are, and you are complaining. I don't, blame, I don't blame them. He didn't tell us. We didn't ask him what type of free researchers he was going to give us. The moment we had free researchers, we, fought, we fell for the bait. And I think it is based on some of these antecedents. That is why the Ghana Federation of Labour is raising some of these issues. That the electorate must be very careful. We had corruption in 2016. When issues of corruption, no, corruption, no, corruption, no, and we we're hearing Sada, Jida, what a view, what a view. And the people of Ghana fell for it and they voted for this government. Today, we can hear PDS, we can hear Ejapo, Ejapo, we wake up in the morning, Ejapo, they want to sell our gold, oh. they want to sell our gold, oh. they want to sell our gold. Oh. And everybody is shocked. Ah, are these not the people oh. who are worried about corruption? Yeah. 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 All right. Are these not the people? Are these not the people who were on the street demonstrating? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, let's be fair. Let's be fair to you. Yeah. You remember? You remember the let my vote count? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 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 occupy Ghana. Occupy Ghana. Yeah. Occupy woke up. Occupy woke up. Ghana. Woke up one morning and in front of the flag, occupy the street of the Flagstaff House. Shouting corruption, oh, corruption, oh, corruption, oh. If you like try it today, the way they will beat you. Today, <laughs> today, the <laughs> chief, the chief, one of the chief the, of the people who are shouting corruption, oh. Remember A. Sankoma? I remember. He's him. part of the Japa deal. Mm. And, so, and so, Ghanaians are shocked. Are these not the same people who are shouting corruption, oh, corruption, oh, and your mama is chopping our money, oh, and your mama is corrupt, oh, and he's corrupt, oh. And these people come to power and they carry their entire country's minerals, mineral royalties and they want to sell it to themselves. So everybody is shocked. So I, I can understand the frustration of the Ghana Federation of Labour. They need to warn Ghanaians because they've seen this before. They've seen it before. They came to us and they told us, the vice president told us, if the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rates will expose you. The economy is weak, oh, the economy is bad, oh, then, then, then this is incompetent. Incompetent, your mama administration. They can't manage the economy. The money is but, here. But, but, I've worked at true. the Bank of Ghana before. I know the money is here. Where is he today? What is the price of the dollar? What is the rate of a dollar to a CV today? What is the exchange rate today as we speak? What is the rate of the economy? As we speak today, the economy is growing at a portal 1.06%. And that somebody was growing about six, six, seven percent. You are saying incompetent, oh, incompetent, oh. I said it's Corona. What I think is Corona, my brother. Yes, sir. If you look at the IMF report, mm -hmm. it will tell you this economy was already in tatters before Corona came. See, even without Corona, this government would have struggled to pay workers' salary in the second quarter, even without Corona. And so, and so, and so, let not anybody, you know, create the impression that it is Corona that is, I mean, that this economy, no. I mean, all the people, in fact, they are aware that the economy was messed up even before Corona. But this was Dr. Baumia, who was organizing town hall meetings, le public lectures upon public lectures, telling us that he's worked at the Bank of Ghana before, and he knows how to fix this economy. And today, this person come into government, and they send you over the roof. The economy is in tatters. There's huge unemployment in the system. And so, the Ghana Federation of Labour can never be, uh, any, any, can, can never have been spot on. When they said, look, Ghanaians, we have seen this before. In 2016, a group of people came to us and they told us all manner of things. They threw all manner of things to us. We agreed, we accepted. Somebody came to us that we should try him. We accepted and we tried him. Today, that person is that, that person wanted to sell our electricity company of Ghana. The person who told us to come and try him, he is good. And he told us that if we try him and he doesn't perform, we should kick him out. That was what he told us. And today, he came and wanted to sell our gold royalties. And he's going about making promises upon promises. And you can see, 
that they've cited a specific example. Say the Labour Union cited the promise of President Nana Kufuado government to construct an airport in Cape Coast as one of the most unrealistic promises workers should not fall prey to. So, so you, you could see that the workers and the Ghana Federation of Labour is concerned that this is a person who came to us in 2016 to try him. And we, we tried him. And he carried all our gold wire, all his people <laughs> to carry all our gold wire to go and sell to his family and friends. Today, this same person is going about telling you he'll build an airport in Cape Coast. Be careful and don't fall prey to some of such promises. And I think the message of the Ghana Foundation of Labour is very, very clear. It's very, very clear. And you cannot underestimate such such message of wisdom. Because to be forewarned, to be forearmed. forearmed. They've told us that, look, you're going to be paying. It's Ghanaians, open your eyes, listen to the promises that are coming to you, and then make sure you make the right decision come December 20th. But I could do the same presidency is not for experiments. Um, do you agree with him or not? That's the next topic I'm starting with you. Well, I think that message itself coming from President Kouwadi is defeating. <laughs> coming from somebody who told us to try him in 2016. In 2016, you had never been president before. You told us to try you. We try you, and in 2020, you tell us the presidency is not an experiment. It's not a place for experiment. So it means... We, we, we are fools for trying you. Well, look at the context. Here. What context? Yes, his opponent is Which a opponent? President who has occupied the seat before, mm -hmm. now made mistakes. Now he's telling us that he mm -hmm. had made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Let's give him the opportunity to come mm -hmm. back and correct mm -hmm. his mistakes. Mm -hmm. That is what George... It is he is sitting on it. He is sitting on it. He's making that, mistakes. Yeah. He's making uh, unpardonable mistakes. Why shouldn't we kick him out? Huh? And now... Yeah. 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 To come and experiment, but you gave him the opportunity, uh -huh. and he's managing the economy. He's managing, managing the country. What? He's holding the country. And they're going to sell our gold wire. Mo 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 on your behalf, on your behalf, they're going to sell our gold wire. In the interest of Mo 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 this country and he's going mm -hmm. to sell to his family and friends mm -hmm. and you are telling me he's doing it for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the company that is set up the name of the company is a japa the name of the company to manage the sovereign source of the people of Ghana is called a japa and i say it's for me mm -hmm. how does a japa concern me please he told us to try him so in effect we gave the presidency to him to experiment and so he has no moral right saying those words. But why are you saying he has no moral right? Because I mean, the he... president, upon assumption of power, has done, in 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 the words of many other Ghanaians, you know, he's done what uh, Napoleon couldn't do. I mean, what? introduction of free SHS, planting for food and jobs, one million one million per constituency, one village, one dam, one district, one factory, uh, youth in afforestation, Napco. Uh, what have you? So many you know, other things. You know all these things you've said. Yeah, year of roots. You, you, you know all these things you've yeah. said. The conspiracy to sell the biggest asset of this country, electricity of company of Ghana, mm -hmm. to his family and friends alone cancels all these things you've said. Even if he had done these, these things. See, I would vote against President Tekufuado if he had even performed all the things he said he would do and has still conspired with his family and friends to sell electricity company of Ghana to his family and friends. I would have voted against President Kufuado if he has done all the things he said he would, he would do and still carry the entire mineral resources of this country and sell it to his family and friends. I would have voted against President Kufuado if he has done all the things he said he would do and still collapse financial institutions, create, creating a lot of unemployment in the system. But he explained I why the financial sector, uh, you know, clean up. Well, right. You explained why. I mean, right. the, the a problem that needed nine billion to fix. Yeah, you spend sixteen billion. Are you questioning the act, or you are questioning the amount involved? But does it make sense, my, yeah. my, my, my brother? Yes, sir. This paper mm -hmm. eh, is torn. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it will cost you nine billion to fix. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody comes and he say, 
have spent 16 billion to fix the same problem. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the 16 billion you spent, when we finished, this paper was even even much torn and much you know scattered than it was before. Worse before than, than it was before. So, so in your estimation, first, there was no need for us to clean up the banking sector. Secondly, the, the amount of money that we put in into that process was the, was there was a poor. need. There was a need to do reform, which would have cost us nine billion. That reform didn't include the collapse of banks. You see, if you look at, at I'm coming, I'm on the floor. If you if you read at nine thirty, mm -hmm. okay, which governs financial institutions in the country, it will tell you that the purpose of administration of banks that means when banks goes into distress and you put them under administration, the purpose of administration is not to collapse it. The purpose of, of administrating, you are on the street demonstrating. Okay, and so and so and so. If President Kufuor has done all the things he said he would do and still have collapsed the bank, I would have voted against him. If President Kufuor has done all the things he said he would do and he has still col closed people's media houses, hmm. creating, you know, a huge challenge in the media space, I would have still voted against President right. Kufuor. And so, and so the issue is pretty much simple. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yes, so, so I'm just wrapping up. The issue is pretty much simple. Uh -huh. I think that President Kufuado has absolutely no moral right mm -hmm. to say the presidency is not for a place for experiment because he himself is, he experimenting. Himself is experimenting as we speak. Thank you very much. Quick commercial break. Stay with us. Don't move him. When I come up, we hear from Mujib and Dr. Nawani. Stay with us. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, we're still here. Zero two six zero four six five three nine is a WhatsApp number. Doctor Wan, let's hear from you briefly, and then we hear from. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, I said Mujib first and not Anwani. Sorry, respectfully. Yeah, Mujib. Kwame, Kwame, and, and I will be very brief. Uh, uh, please be very brief. Kwame, uh, this issue, I said politics, we do politics to save us, the citizens. Mm -hmm. But the politics we are doing in Ghana, I am a young politician, but sometimes I get worried. Because when this issue, we will look at it broadly and say, okay, this is the best way to go. But anybody like... MPP will try to look at it this way, NDC try to look at it this way. But at the end of the day, we all know the facts. You are talking of this banking crisis, and you are putting all the blames on government. Come, I mean, let's ask ourselves. As MPP had come in 2017, if the banking sector was intact, and all these banks were not having challenges, who would have turned the banking sector? Nobody would have touched the banking sector. But Kwame, the truth is that the former finance minister of under NDC, Setepe, and the fa current finance minister of M under MPP, Kinofrata, all agreed that there was something wrong in the banking sector. Of course. That is an I, I am coming. I am coming. I am coming. I don't, no, I am coming. I was expecting you to let us understand, even before MPP came to government, the NDC government then has taken steps to save the banking sector. That was why taxpayers' money mm -hmm. through Bank of Ghana was given to these banks to save them. And where did those money ended up to? Why did the NDC collapse them? 
No, but uh, come on. that is the essential and the method. Okay. So One week. No, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. I'm coming. Ah, so you have given out money like the American system. Mm -hmm. The banks were in distress. Mm -hmm. They are insolvent. They don't have money. Mm -hmm. What they needed is money. Mm -hmm. Kwame, you have given them money mm -hmm. and they did not use the money for the purpose of which the money was given to them. So you and you, I'm coming, them. I'm coming. Of course. You go and collapse. If I were you, I collapse them too. Why? Why? So you expect Why me to hold them? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I hope you are getting the argument. So, Kwame, now we came, all the uh, documents and everything was available. Tell even those like who were even be benefiting from the bank, MD managing director, I said, ah, but if this is where you are, and your interest number one to see your company growing, you are in distress, got taxpayers' money have been given to you to save their banks, and those monies have not been used for the purpose. So, MPP come, we should give you another money. And now, what is the guarantee? That if we give you another money from the taxpayers' money, this time around, you use the money for the for the purpose. Why? Why don't you? I am. That, I said, Master, my brother, what is your problem? Well, the well, problem well. is the style of leadership of the people. There were so many options. So take them away and save the institution, and save jobs. But I'm, I, but I, I, Kwame, I thought you should ask yeah, him. Yeah, Thompson, Thompson, let but me make where are they this thing? Yeah. The this consolidated bank Ghana. Mm -hmm. That is. Uh, the amalgamation of, of the bank. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and that, whichever it is, it's Ghanaian. That is another topic. Whether it is me, I'm a Ghanaian. If I had money, I would have bought shares there and be a shareholder. It doesn't, nothing is, it is permitted by law. But I hope you are getting the argument. So, Kwame, I don't fault the NDC that much when it comes to the banking sector. But the problem is, after having given them money, and realizing that the money was not used for the intended purpose, I think that that is where now his point come in. The directors and those involved in mismanaging the money should have been taken on. I hope you are getting the argument. But now, the, the, the impression was created out there as if everything was correct. Nothing was wrong. Meanwhile, that is not the situation. Why is it that way? Sorry, sorry. Please proceed. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Mujib. Go ahead. Sir, I hope you are getting there. So I think that it's a, this time around, they said, no, let's look at it in a different, different, different uh, angle. Come and I'm told some of these banks, they were, their monies were not there. They would just move money in to show maybe when external auditors from Bank come of in. Ghana are coming and they move it out. Yeah. But I think that we need to streamline. Nobody, it's, it's not in the interest of anybody to collapse anybody bank. But the truth is that what you have said, it is not still out of place. Now you save the banks, and those be are for crimes. Crimes doesn't uh, uh, decay. It doesn't rot. So uh, you see, government is still you. going let's, after, let's, after. No, but let's even come to the management of the economy when it comes to those things. I think if there's a chance, I'll come back. Because he no, tried to throw lies right. on how we came. Dr. Baumier said he'll manage the economy and all those, those things. Not, and and, and I'm coming. And come. He said so much money that we have borrowed, we are not getting there. You see, Kwame, this country... Our hypo the hypocrisy is too much in this country. What is the hypocrisy? Kwame, let me say? tell you something. Yeah. Kwame, when NDC was living, both the road sector and the uh, 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 education sector, there were a lot of uh, uh, projects that they have awarded mm. that they have not paid for. Mm -hmm. Doc, it's right. Okay. And when we came in, you've paid. Oh my God. We paid those money. Hey. And the debt is Hey. Oh, my hey. God. Hey. Please don't. Well, which one is? Which one is you pay? Come What what money? We pay for get you money. You pay for the road sector. Where I am telling you, where you are still all the money. But 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 Go to get fun now and see mm. how we have significantly you paid. You are the what, you, what, what is your problem? You told the contractor to stop working. I, but, like, but, but I am coming. 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 I am
making a headway. Let him make a headway. You put a car. We know. We know. We know. We know. We know. We know. We say stop. We did auditing. We are fair. What we audit and you pay them. Oh, hold on. It's there and it's right. We pay you your money. That's a lie. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Significantly, and when you go to the road sector, let me make it. Let me tell you. And you see, what people don't know is that those areas are not areas like when you go, you just pay and it's your balance is zero. That is not how it works. How, how, how does it work? I'm coming. Okay. Somebody is has given a six classroom block to, to work on. Okay. He has put down the superstructure mm -hmm. and he has put up the, uh, the, 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 the no, not the structure itself, the pillars. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't have money to continue. That person at that stage can raise a certificate. Mm -hmm. So when the certificate is given, maybe because he doesn't have money, he's not outside. But when the certificate is honored, He's gone back to the side. I hope you are getting the argument to pro to move. Maybe now the blocks work up to the the entry level and roofing. At that stage, certificate comes. But some do that when they pay. The, uh, no, no, I'm coming. I'm yeah. coming. Come okay. Let me land. Okay, okay. When you finish at certain stage, mm -hmm. and now those who can raise money from somewhere mm -hmm. go again. So as this one is being paid. A second certificate is in. It's issued. Okay. I, I hope you are getting. You don't wait until maybe all the testing is the building is completed before you make one certificate. That is not how. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, but, but you are here. Oh, the NDC is here criticizing us of taking using get one to take money. And that's those money. Where have those monies go? Those ah. monies have been used to pay it's the true. people. Is that true? What the money? Chop what money? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you yeah, 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 yeah. doubt? You can tell me you chop the money. No, 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 no. How did you chop the money? Oh my the God. money has gone no, no, to consumption. It's okay. No, okay. Not chop no. Money. How? What consumption? Ah, you've taken the money to a flagstaff house. You pay hundred and twenty-five. How did you put that? What he's saying? What he's saying is, can you can you substantiate? Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 No, let me understand something. Well, look at let me understand. Services, uh -huh. and the office of the president. Look at how much is spent on. But how do you know that that money is what is being? But they're not paying the contractors. Because you are lying. Because you are lying. Because I said contractors. It's a lie. Ah. You, you remember? Hold on. Hold on. You remember? What do you mean? The lack of payment of contractors is yeah. one of the reasons why the banks are collapsed. What banks? Because, because the, the, the contractors took loans from the banks. Oh my God, man! You didn't pay the the contractors. As at the time, we're collapsing the bank. We are not. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you're the one that's in it. Let me let me tell let me tell you. You see, people just want to throw things for throwing sick. No, don't sit here. I am coming. I am coming. I am coming. You haven't paid contractors. I am coming. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You have not paid contractors. Hold on, hold on. Since we came, you have not paid the contractors. So since we came, don't. But 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 what is your problem? I know something that I'm telling you. You cannot take them. We have paid them. How? We have paid them. So what is what is your basis of saying that we have not paid them? The contractors union was recently on radio. When because they went somewhere and and told the wife of the contractors that he has released the bills of the contractors. Come to jail. Come to jail. Has he been caught? I think he's part of the contractors. So it's a question about it. No no no. But he's lying. But he's lying. So that's the point. That's the point. That's the point. Hold on, Thompson. Hold on. For me to talk. Thompson, hold on, hold on. Let's have a decent show, please. Ah, Mujib. Come here. I said, oh, what, what, my God, man. You've lost your, your chin. Oh, <laughs> man, <laughs> man, man, I'm man. Paid. Okay. Oh, man, man. You don't know, you don't know, Kwame, you don't know. Kwame, you don't you know. have been paid. Kwame, 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 if allow me, maybe you may give him opportunity to respond. It's better course. that way. Course, we are yeah. doing intellectual intellectual discourse. Well, of course. Kwame, the problem is if you agree that there were a major projects going on, that is why you are touting on mm. infrastructure on JM uh, that is JM legacy. Absolutely. Both the road sector and the educational sector. Mm -hmm. Kwame, if you are sensible and your head is working, mm -hmm. 18, three years down the line, you still come here. And sit with me when you go to Ghana when the administrator of Ghana Education Trust Fund I think somewhere this year issue a statement that all their uh, obligations to contractors have been paid except those who have few challenges and th that is the uh, procedural work uh, and yeah. procedural issues should get back to the consultants or the office for rectification of that error mm -hmm. and they can go ahead to pay them mm -hmm. and now today you are an ordinary person Mm -hmm. You are not working there. You don't have that locus. You are now challenging that. It mm -hmm. is not true. 
So my argument is my argument is the fact that you said, but those who were on contract between that those period up to 2019, mm -hmm. all those obligations have been cleared, mm -hmm. and that is where my problem is. It doesn't mean that those institutions are now free because some of the projects were halfway completed. Some were still at the base level. Some were almost 90% complete. But you have to continue. Mm -hmm. as, as the same as the road sector. But the challenge is, let me tell you, when we came, it is true, even in the road sector, mm -hmm. we said, stop work. Let's audit. The audit take a process. The cocoa rose that you went inflated, inflated the prices. Some contractors agree well, that after having taken through them a, a audit, serious right. audit, they mm -hmm. agree that right. a, the contractor sum has to be re look, okay. looked at. Let, let and that made right. government to get some money. Okay. But to see, Abakwami, in summary, mm -hmm. you borrow, and even that is not, let's even leave the construction. NDC equally borrowed. And they agree. It is true. It, we borrowed more than them. Whether, whether it's 20 billion. And, and they never paid the 20 billion before leaving. Okay. So now who is paid? Who will pay the 20 okay, billion? So no, who, who will pay the 20 billion? Let's no, but that is not the right figure. That is not the right figure. Why is the money you borrowed? But what, under what capacity will we come and give you money we borrowed? But, but the, two the money we borrowed. What, 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 what is interest to you now? No, what is interest to him? Let me let me put it. Let me put it. What is interest to him that you are working free as a Ghanaian? You have your lives on 24 hours. Ways, uh -huh. if your brother is a nurse or a teacher, he'll be paid at the end of the month. That's that is what you that's you. the one to so when you borrow the money to that, that was the one to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's what you use. That's 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 a member of parliament, you have been paid every month. Your are of the They are not so they are not They are not so they are not They are not so they are not so they are not They are 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 They all claims or arrears to the NHIS fund. The following day, the service providers were now demonstrating. It was called the day after the last allow contractors. We don't want them to go. 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 We don't want um, for once, no, the one has nothing to say. He's some red. No, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm saying, saying that <laughs> <laughs> I can't shout like you. <laughs> if I shout like you, I'll lose my voice. No, but is this my who calls me this um, morning? I told you, I just for once, I agree let's with, end the show. Let's end mm, the show, please. For once, I agree with the president, with the president, and that is that is he begged. In fact, he was particularly on his knees wherever he went and begged that. People should try him. People should try him. People should try him. And that, you know, whilst taking his calipo, he will tell them that, now, don't you have pity on me? And out of pity, and out of those excessive promises, he was giving the, 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 the country to run. And we now know what, what has happened. For each program that they say they are carrying no, out, we don't want to go to IMF. We don't oh, want to for go to the program. Mm -hmm. For each program that they are carrying out, ah, uh, is a way of siphoning money out of the system. You can talk of the banks, and you know that they, if they needed nine, nine, nine billion, they would take sixteen billion. You can talk of uh, planning for food and jobs, the same principle. You can talk of this presidential initiatives. That is the dam, etc. In the budget, they quoted the dams as 750,000 to be used to construct a dam. And now, when they came to the ground, when you ask the contractors, they say that they were given 250. And because of the 250 that was given to them, that is how, the, that's the nature of the dam that can be constructed with 250,000. So you look at all their programs. And you realize that money is being siphoned out. And that is why, as we speak now, either their projects are not carried out properly, or uh, they are done in such a way that uh, you end up asking this question, where has all this money passed? So please, let us just be honest, this is a government that came to do experiment. <laughs> you know, this is a government, uh, the president, I don't know whether he doesn't understand the issues, or he's just 
deliberately yeah? left the country, the run of the country to other people who are using his name and his position to siphon money for the 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 the, the, the Akufado, uh, I don't know whether is it uh, uh, they want to create whatever they call it. This idea of state capture, you know, is out of the uh, this experiment that he's carrying. Okay, all right. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no, no, no. Thank you. No, no, no. no, 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 no. What can you justify what you just said? State capture. State capture. What are the basic? I don't have a paper. You pass everything. You are not in parliament. Now today, I walked out. It is a record. It is a record. I walked out. You see the double standard. You see the double standard of the the minority. You sold our gold. You are elite. You say we are we have sold. What do I have sold? The thing is still in play. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Nawani is the MP for Nabdam constituency. <laughs> Mujib <laughs> Rahman is a leading communicator for the MPP. And uh, Mr. Mensah Thompson is the executive director for ASEPA. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. That is true. You see, it's left to right center. <laughs> okay, right. The messages that they started coming in, a lot of them, people are actually but fifty-eight percent of welcome. our box are well, uh, given to Ibrahim. Yeah, Doctor, yeah. let's don't go there. Uh, thank you very much, Muji. Muji, thank you very much. Thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Do have a very wonderful day. My name is Kwame Usudanso. Bye bye. <laughs>